Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing our channel as we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography. Now in today's session on world regional geography, we are going to learn about the Southeast Asian region or the Southeast Asian countries and the water bodies and several geographical aspects related to the Southeast Asia. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the Southeast Asian region or the Southeast Asian realm. So it is south of China and also it has boundaries with the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So many times it's also called the Indo-Pacific region as well. So if you observe the countries out here, right from Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, then you have Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, then you have the largest of this particular island chain archipelago country, the Indonesia, where you have Java, Sumatra, Borneo, Brunei is here and then you will have New Guinea and Philippines that is the island chains out here. So Southeast Asian region if you observe is a realm of peninsulas and islands and also comprising of the Pacific Ring of Fire very important for geomorphology if you remember. So corner of Asia bounded by India on the northwest and China in the northeast. So many times it's also referred to as Indochina region as well right the core region this particular region is also referred to as Indochina region. Now if you observe that who's the giant in the region remember the giant in the region is this Indonesia chain of islands the archipelago country. Now looking into the development of human geography in this region if you observe here there are people coming from India as traders who settled here people from China also the settlers then coming from Indian Ocean region Arabs and other people from Europe who developed the commercial aspects and travel tourism and other industries out here. So basically this is an amalgamation of the world cultures in this particular region right and now if you observe furthermore that Mekong River one major river originating in the Tibetan Highlands Plateau of China this is one major river that is acting like Danube River if you remember crossing through multiple countries so almost five countries China then you have Myanmar here Thailand Laos Vietnam and then Cambodia out here so this river crosses through these various countries out here and it has numerous dam construction that you can see and observe in this particular region. So this particular region which is also core of Indochina region if you observe these countries here are drained by lot of rivers and rivulets and also the major river here is Mekong. So what happens the millions of farmers, fishermen and boat owners are thriving with this inland system of drainage, transport and also the export and import industry is very important in terms of economic progress of this region. Now let's observe the regional dimensions and the divisions of this particular realm. So if you observe this area is called mainland region, mainland Indochina region. So what was the earlier colonial status of this region? Let's observe. So if you observe here, French sphere was this entire area of the Laos and Cambodia and this particular area if you observe carefully that is Vietnam. This was the French controlled area. Then if you observe British control area, so largely Malaysian and also the Burmese, this empire was British controlled. Then if you observe area yielded by Thailand, so green area and the Thailand area, this is under the Thailand basically. And then if you observe the Netherlands, the Dutch, so all the Sumatra, Borneo, Java, Celebs, all these islands if you observe were under the Dutch control during colonialism and then later they got freed and the Philippines and its island chain were taken over by Spanish empire in the past. So that's how if you observe the imprints of colonialism and that's why world cultural realm also we say that many people from different realms come here and they bring their cultures alongside they settled and now it's presenting a cosmopolitan sphere of the earth. Now if you observe further the chaos in this particular region because of the claims of nations on the sea area. So what you observe in today's world this is the most contested 
contested marine geopolitical space and the area is South China Sea. In the earlier lecture also we talked about how China is trying to occupy most of the area. So this red line virtually if you observe this is where China claims that entire South China Sea is Chinese. Then further if you observe this green part here this is something which is part of the Philippines claim out here right. So this green is Philippines claim red is China then you have this Brunei claim out here this area is claimed by Brunei then further Malaysian claim if you observe this particular color out here this is supposed to be under Malaysia and then if you observe the Vietnamese also claim this particular portion of the South China Sea. So what you observe is the chaos and also demand for people's own interests that is vested in the oil and gas and all the resources available in South China Sea. So this area is now becoming the center for the domination over the sea that is South China Sea. Now if you observe carefully the shapes of these countries are very unique if you observe physiographically. So Cambodia is a compact shape. Thailand is protruded if you see this protrusion here this isthmus and then further fragmented is the Philippines Islands and Vietnam is elongated from north to south. So very interesting features and interesting shapes of countries in this region is available. Then further if you observe this particular region which is core Indochina belt. So carefully in the map what we can do is look into the water bodies and some of the important areas. So right from the western margin we start this is Yangon. Rangoon in the earlier times it, as it was called. Here is Gulf of Martaban, mouth of the Iravadi River which passes through the entire country, the main river. This is Iravadi Delta out here and this is Arakanyoma Mountains here, right, which forms a boundary between India and Myanmar. Then if you observe Mandalay is out here, one important center and also the Salvin River is here which is like a boundary between Thailand and Myanmar. Then coming to the Thailand, remember this is the Bangkok region region and Gulf of Thailand and then further Thailand has some portions out here extended till this portion right which connects the Malian Peninsula and here is the Phuket remember this is very interesting and important uh, tourist center in today's world and also Bangkok is the major center and it is drained by several rivers out here in Bangkok if you observe. Now let's go further from Andaman Sea to the Gulf of Thailand region and here if you observe this delta area is Mekong Delta near Ho Chi Minh City the southern part of Vietnam and capital of South Vietnam if you observe and then further in the North Vietnam Hanoi and this area is very important where China also has a lot of influence in this particular area the Gulf of Tonkin if you observe this particular side right here is Henan Island of China and then further you have smaller islands called Parcel Islands in this particular portion in the South China sea, Spratly Islands and other islands. So let's look further into further eastern portion as we go. Here in the northern side is a Luzon Strait between Batan Islands of the Philippines and Babuyan Islands. Then if you observe the northern portion, the Luzon portion is here you have the highlands called Sierra Madre if this side and this is all the Philippines portion out here which has lot of mountains and because it is also lying on the Pacific Ring of Fire so most of them have volcanic origins if you observe. So a lot of islands like Palwan, then you have a lot of inland seas out here if you observe Cebu and Sea, Tabla Strait, Midoro Strait, then you have the Sulu Sea in between this, right? Then Bolol Sea, Moro Gulf out here, this Gulf region here. So these are some of the important and interesting areas. Now further if you go into the broader framework of this particular region, so it's largely an archipelago region where in the north this is the Malian Peninsula, Kuala Lumpur is out here if you observe and in the tip of this is the Singapore which we'll be looking into and then you have the Strait of Malacca out here between this. So you see Sumatra Islands out here and Sumatra has another set of islands out here. This particular chain of islands also formed at the same time and here is Jakarta where you have the Java. So you have Java Trench out here as well. So remember greater Sunda Islands are this side and lesser Sunda Islands are this side part of the Indonesia right and very important areas if you observe this is where Bali is a very famous international destination. Bali Sea is out here, Flores Sea is out here, then you have the Makassar Strait, Celeb Sea, right? Celeb Sea is the area which is between the Midanao and this particular area of the Indonesia and Sulawesi or Celeb that we say is this part of Indonesia as well. Now this portion is called Borneo with Highland and that separates Borneo from also Brunei. So this portion is controlled by Malaysia, this Borneo portion is controlled by Indonesia and here you have this small Brunei, right? That is what is important. 
now going here this is the maluku sea then you have the serum sea all these small small inland seas are important then you have the major sea called banda sea here very important and this region is also called the malukas region as well right and then it is connected with the new guinea so let's observe further towards new guinea so this area if you observe is divided by this portion this is where the indonesian jurisdiction ends and this is where the pacific area begins that is papua new guinea which we'll be talking about in the next lecture now if you observe this entire stretch has lot of volcanic islands as also active volcanoes which we see erupting from time to time and here is the timer sea if you observe which separates this island chain from austral realm so let's look into one more important point in this region is in terms of biodiversity coral triangle this triangle between the philippines malaysia indonesia timer sea papua new guinea and solomon islands this triangle region is also having the essential conditions for world's greatest biodiversity especially marine biodiversity and very famously we know it by the name coral triangle and coral reef protection is very important in today's world so this june 9th has been declared as coral triangle day as well for the awareness campaign so if you observe 76% of our coral species in this triangle 6 by 7 of the world's marine turtle species are found 37% of world's coral reef fish species found 130 million people are residing in these islands if you observe so this island is the important area in the world especially for coral reef protection now if you observe further the singapore which is the heart of the trade and commerce in this region on the peninsula that is malayan peninsula tip so it has lot of developments in terms of the urbanization core area built up area we can see in the yellow color and green areas are the areas which are non built up areas and if you remember singapore which was once the crown of british imperialism colonialism ceded to the malaysian and then later on in 1963 they got independence from the malaysia and were recognized as a sovereign state of their own so if you observe some important points about singapore and its development so singapore basically thrived as an interpot between malay peninsula and rest of southeast asia japan and other emerging economic powers so it serves as a very important connecting centers for businesses across southeast asia and asia pacific realm if you remember so you can look into the development that they have done on this island and then further crude oil from south asia southeast asia is unloaded and refined in singapore that's where the economy is generated in singapore because they don't have much of land resources then ship to east asia destinations furthermore if you observe raw rubber from adjacent malayan peninsula and indonesia is processed here as well and then they are transported so singapore is doing wonderful in terms of processing industries they don't have resources of their own but they have technology driven processing industries and units and also a huge export sector that they have right so timber from malaysia rice spices and other food stuff everything is processed in singapore and then packaged and transported that's their income is booming so if you observe carefully in return automobiles machinery equipment are imported in southeast asia and distribution is mostly controlled by singapore exclusively so world business hub in indo pacific is controlled by singapore if you observe that's why it becomes so important country let's look into the population distribution in this particular realm so if you observe this particular shape if you observe the core area which also looks like a turtle or you can say like a wild hare sitting so the core area has a very dense population especially in the some coastal areas and coastal cities if you observe carefully so those are the core areas while rest of the area is very less populated the islands are sparsely populated then further if you observe some important and interesting geomorphic landscapes like these karst landscapes have formed with slow and steady dissolution of limestone if you observe these kind of pillars if you observe carefully and the inland transport system is widely developed in the region and malaysia and indonesia have benefited together with world's 90% of palm oil control so what you observe here the areas the greens on this map if you observe carefully are where the maximum palm production palm oil production is happening and not just that remember this area is also the seat of world's highest rubber plantation so if you observe the red zones are the older ones which started all the way back in 1877 especially the malayan peninsula is famous and the most densest of the rubber plantations you will observe and these blue areas are the new areas of rubber plantations if you observe in this particular 
realm. Now, if you observe further the ethnic mosaic of the Southeast Asia, so ethnic mosaic consists of Indo Aryan, Chinese, and Thai, then you have Indonesian, Papuan, Vietnamese, Tibeto Burman, Mong Khmer. So if you observe the green, deep green color is Mong Khmer ones, then what you observe, this Indo-Aryan or you say Hindustani, if you observe, are found and Singapore, Chinese in Malaysia and also some portions in Indonesia. And then further, the Thai population, the whole of Thailand and nearby areas. Then you have Papuan in the island chain near the Pacific, Vietnamese, of course, from north to south Vietnam. And then further, if you observe, the Tibeto Burman population is all in the Burma region. Then further if you observe the transgression of Chinese have recently increased in the last few decades in this region. So this is how the Chinese are migrating and settling in these countries. These flow diagram will help you to understand the large scale influx of Chinese people and also the control over South China Sea that we observe here. Then let's look into the Indochina region with a little more detail. So if you observe this portion the Red River Delta that we say this Delta region Hanoi in the North Vietnam supported by China and Gulf of Tonkin this area is the core area of North Vietnam drained by a lot of inland rivers which are very helpful for transportation and nearby Laos which is almost a landlocked country is dependent upon the nearby countries for their economy. Now if you observe the South one the South Vietnam is far more developed and if you remember this area Ho Chi Minh City and the Mekong River Delta is one of the major hub of the international trade and South Vietnam is more developed than North Vietnam as we know and the nearby Cambodia which is also very important Phnom Phen this area is the capital and this particular river Mekong River drains out here and multiple projects have been built on this particular river and at last let's look into the Thailand and the core region so if you observe this is Bangkok then you have the Pattaya out here then Phuket out here this is the elongated structure of the Bangkok as we say this is Thomas and Gulf of Thailand this area so major area and urbanization is concentrated on this particular belt of Thailand only this is most populated belt but other areas are drained by other rivers like Ping River then you have the Chao Phraya River and other smaller rivulets so this is basically a country of lot of river and river connected areas and also because they are in the tropics and monsoon Asia is definitely impacting these regions nearby Andaman Sea is there and you see Margui Archipelago connectivity from the South China Sea and the Pacific through South China Sea is what makes this area also a business hub and especially for the tourism sector in the world. So now when we have discussed in details about the various aspects of the Southeast Asia in the sessions to come we'll be talking about the Pacific and also the Australian region but before we go ahead please don't forget to subscribe to our channel also keep watching and learning keep sharing the videos with others best wishes.